In just a moment, hear Best Plays. First, though, all of us look forward to a relaxing weekend these hot summer days. But weekdays, NBC brings you lots of easy listening, too, with Bob Hope and Dave Garraway, as well as a chance to visit with one man's family. For quiz Monday through Friday, there's It Pays to be Married and Second Chance. And, of course, the most up-to-the-minute direct reports from home and abroad on Morgan Beatty's famous News of the World. Yes, weekdays, listening's a pleasure, too. And now, best plays on NBC. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach in The Rose Tattoo by Tennessee Williams. Mr. Chapman. The author of our best play, Tennessee Williams, has managed to win one Pulitzer Prize and two Drama Critics Circle Awards, which is good going for a young man who is trying to work his way up in the theater. Better than his prize-winning ability, though, is Williams' ability to start people talking. For talk is as important to the stage as it is on it. All Williams' plays so far are easily remembered, including the one we are about to offer you, The Rose Tattoo. His first three heroines in The Glass Menagerie, A Streetcar Named Desire, and Summer and Smoke were repressed women. Trying a change of pace, Williams wondered what would happen if one of his women were unrepressed. The Rose Tattoo, which is a comedy for adults, is the result. Its successful production on Broadway brought sudden fame to the two leading actors, Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach, and we are happy to present them to you in this performance. Now the day is drawing toward the evening. This is the hour that we Italians call Prima Sera, the beginning of dusk. That is where we are in time. In place, imagine that we are somewhere between New Orleans, Louisiana and Mobile, Alabama, and that we are about to enter the house of Baronessa Serafina delle Rose, a dressmaker. Serafina! Serafina! Assunta! Is that you? Si. Buonasera, cara. Buonasera. Come on in. There is something wild in the air. No wind, but everything is moving. Uh, I don't see nothing moving, and neither do you. Hmm. Oh, Sumter. Could you undo a couple of hooks? The dress is so tight on me. The baby's coming soon, huh? Soon. Asunta, hmm. I'll tell you something which maybe you won't believe. Huh. It's impossible to tell me anything that I don't believe. Siete, Sunta. I knew that I was to become a mother the very night it happened. There was something different. Davvero. Ah, siete. That night, I woke up with a burning pain on me. Here, a pain like a needle. Quick, quick, hot, little stitches. So I turned on the light. I looked at my breast. I saw the rose tattoo of my husband. Rosario's tattoo? On me. His tattoo. And when I saw it, I knew. Did Rosario see it? Well, I screamed. When he woke up, it was gone. It only lasted a moment. But I did see it. And I did know when I seen it that in my body another rose was grown. Did he believe it that you saw it? No. He laughed. He laughed and I cried. Hmm. And he took you in his arms, and then you stopped crying. <laughs> <laughs> si. Oh, Serafina, for you, everything has to be different. A sign, a miracle, a wonder of some kind. That's the truth. But why? Because you are more important? The wife of the barone? Ah, uh, in Sicily, they call his uncle a barone. But in Sicily, everybody's a barone that owns a piece of the land and a separate house for the goats. And here... What is the Barone de la Rosa? He drives a truck of bananas. No, not bananas. Cosa dice? No bananas. On top of the truck is the bananas. But underneath is something else. Che altra cosa? Why? 
Whatever it is that the brothers Romano want hauled out of the state, he hauls it for them underneath the bananas. And money. He gets so much money, it spills from his pocket. Soon I don't have to make dresses. Soon I think you will have to make a black veil. Oh, no. No. Tonight's the last time he does it. Tomorrow, he quits hauling stuff for the brothers Romano. He pays for the ten-ton truck and works for himself. We live with dignity in America then. Our own truck. Our own house. In the house, everything will be electric. But tonight, Asunta, stay with me. I can't swallow my heart. Not till I hear the truck stop in front of the house and his key in the lock in the door. In his hair, Asunta, he wears oil of roses. And when I wake up at night, the air, the dark room, it's full of roses. With him, time doesn't pass. Hmm. You say the clock is a liar? No. <laughs> I say the clock is a fool. I don't listen to it. My heart is my clock. My heart don't say tick, tick. It says love, love. Now, I have two hearts in me. Both of them saying love, love. Asunta, I can't swallow my heart. A woman must not have a heart too big to swallow. By Buenos Aires. Oh, stay with me. I have to visit a woman who drank red poison because of a heart too big for her to uh... swallow. Go then. I'll not be alone. It's so wonderful having two lives in the body. Not one, but two. I'm heavy with life. I'm big. Big, big with life. Yes, I heard you do sewing. Yes, I do sewing. Come in. You can sit right down there. How fast can you make a shirt for me? Well, that all depends. I got a piece of silk with me. I want it made into a shirt for a man I'm in love with. Tomorrow's the anniversary of the day we met. Here's the material. Bella Stoffa. Ooh, that would be wonderful stuff for a lady's blouse. I want a man's shirt made with it. Silk? This red for a shirt for a man? <laughs> this man is wild like a gypsy. Oh, a woman should not encourage a man to be wild. A man that's wild is hard for a woman to hold. But if he was tame, would the woman want to hold him? Hmm? I'm a married woman in business. I don't know nothing about wild men and wild women. I don't have I'll pay time. you three times the price you ask me for it. Oh. Money's not the object. But it's got to be ready tomorrow. See. Si. Uh, pin the measurements and your name on the silk and the shirt will be ready tomorrow. The name, please? My name is Estelle Hohengarten. Here, you write it on the card. You come tomorrow. It'll be ready if I have to work all night. <laughs> Serafina did work all night, perhaps in order to finish the shirt. Or maybe it was just to keep her mind away from her husband who had still not returned from his trip. When morning came, I was the first one to know why. Because Father DiLeo came and asked me to go with him and break the news to her. As we came up into the yard, her sewing machine was still going. There's still a light in the house? She's still working. Asunta, will you tell her that Rosario is dead? Oh, Father, it will not be necessary to tell her. She will know when she sees us. <sighs> Serafina! Who is that? Asunta. Father. Serafina. Uh, Rosario... Don't speak. Don't tell me. My child, we must... Don't speak! Don't speak! She's lost the baby. But Seraphine is a very strong woman and it won't kill her. But she's trying not to breathe. Asunta, this is a hypodermic. See. In the arm with the needle if she screams or... Struggles to get up again. I capisco, dottore.
For three years after Rosario's death, Serafina did not leave the house. She didn't comb her hair and always wore the same dirty old petticoat. And the time she wasn't sewing, she spent it kneeling down in front of the marble urn where she kept her husband's ashes. On the morning her daughter Rosa was to graduate from the high school, a woman that i never seen before came by my porch and stopped. Could you tell me where I might find Rosa Della Rosa? Um, what do you want with her? I'm a high school teacher. Have you seen her? Rosa? I see her this morning at Celefina's window. And you know how? How? <laughs> Naked. Why? What did she do? Do? You know what she said? Signora, Signora, please call this numero and ask for Jack. And tell Jack my clothes are locked up so I can get out from the house. Then Serafina come. She grabbed the girl by the hair and she pulled up from the window and she slammed the shutters right on my face. Who is Jack? Oh, he's a sailor. She met him at the high school dance. <laughs> and you know, somebody tells Serafina. That's why she locked up the girl's clothes and she can't leave the house. Oh, maybe something's going on in that house. I hear someone. That's Serafina's house. She cut her wrist, She cut her wrist. She cut her wrist, my daughter. Madonna. Madonna me. So your daughter has not cut her wrist. Now, come in and see her. Get it. Get it. Your daughter's all right. Rosa. Rosa, come here and show your mother that you're not bleeding to death. Mama, it's all right Oh, now. it's still bleeding. I should have died, Mama. <laughs> so ashamed I could die. See the way she looks at me. I got a wild thing in my heart. Let's not have any more outbursts of emotion. Out... Out... You make me sick. Sick to my stomach, you make me. You, school, you start all this trouble. You, you give this dance and she gets mixed up with a sailor. Don't listen to her. Don't pay any attention to her, Miss York. I'm ready to go to the high school. What do you think you want to do at this high school? How high is this high school? Look, I'll show you. As high as that pile of dirt out there in the street. Mama, stop it. Now, wait stop a minute. minute. I ain't through talking. This is your teacher. I'm so ashamed I could die. You look disgusting. Disgusting. Disgusting! You hear what my daughter called me? She called me disgusting. Mrs. De La Rosa, why don't you take a bath, get dressed, and come to the graduation? See, yeah. maybe that's what I'll do. I'll go on ahead with Rosa. You come on when you're ready. Will you? I'll come. In 15 minutes, I'll be there. Serafina? Serafina? Try the door and see if it ain't open, Clara. Oh, you. Oh, don't bother me now. Please, I'm late for the graduation, and I can't find the graduation for You've got plenty of time. Do you, you hear the band playing? They're just warming up. Now, Serafina, where's my blouse? Your blouse? Oh, it's not ready. Look, i got to get to the high school now. Well, I've got to get to the depot in that blouse. We're going to the American Legion Parade in Orleans. All right, give it to me. I'll stitch them together. Oh, if you make me late for my daughter's graduation, I'll make you sorry somehow. Now, Bessie, don't wear out your feet before we get to the city. Oh, Molly told me the town is full of excitement. They're dropping paper sacks full of water out of hotel windows. No kidding. <laughs> A double dog dare anybody to try that on me. <laughs> hey, you two ladies, watch how you talk. This here is a religious house. You're sitting in the same room with our lady and the blessed ashes of my husband. Well... Excuse me. 
You know, Bessie, she used to have a sweet figure. A little bit plump, but attractive. Uh, but sitting there at that sewing machine for three years in a slip and not stepping out of the house is naturally give her hips. <laughs> if I didn't have hips, I'd be a very uncomfortable woman when I sat down. Hey, who's that? Two Legion Nails are on the highway. Legion Nails, no kidding. Uh, uh, always looking this way. Yes, I think. Um, uh, Mademoiselle from on the tip, pa, like that. Mademoiselle from on the tip, pa, like that. Yes, ma'am. When I think of men, I think about my husband. My husband was a Sicilian. And maybe that's the reason. I'm not man crazy, and I don't like hearing the talk of women that are. Oh, no, let's go. Forget no, the blouse. Just wait a minute. Listen, I don't accept insults from no one. Ah, uh, go on. Go on to New Orleans. You two men crazy things, you. And do what you want. But not in my house. At my window, in front of my husband's ashes. I'm not interested in that sort of man-crazy business. I remember my husband with the body of a young boy and hair on his head, black and thick as mine is, and skin on him, smooth and sweet as a yellow rose. <laughs> a rose, was it? Yes. Yes, a rose. A rose. Yes, a rose. Of a gangster shot smuggling dope under a load of bananas. Oh, no, so let's go. My no. folks were peasants. But he, he come from the landowner. Signorelli, my husband. I'm satisfied to remember the love of a man that was only mine. Never touched by the hand of nobody. Nobody but me. Just me. Never touched by nobody? Never. Nobody but me. I know somebody that could a tale unfold. And not so far from here, neither. Not no further than the, the square roof is. That place on... On Esplanade? Estelle Hohengarten. Yes, Estelle Hohengarten, the blackjack dealer from Texas. What did you say? Everybody's known it but you, Seraphina. I'm just telling the facts that come out at the inquest while, while you was in bed with your eyes shut tight and a sheet pulled up over your head like a, a, a female ostrich. And it was a romance. Not just a fly-by-night thing, but a steady affair that went on for more than a year. Liar. And he had a rose tattoo on his chest. And Estelle was so gone on him, she went on down to Bourbon Street and had one put on her. You liar. You liar! Oh, let's go, let's go. She's gonna hit you. She better not. Liar! <laughs> Are you there, Mama? Rosa? Yeah, she's in there. Well, I better go and wait outside for a while. Will you stay right here? Mama, Jack's with me. Are you dressed up nicely? <laughs> Why is it so dark in here? Well, wait a minute. <gasps> Mama! Oh, Mama, you said you were dressed up pretty. Rose, you, uh, graduate all right. Mama, this is Jack Hunter. Hello, Mrs. Del Rosa. It sure is a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. I was hoping to see you at the graduation. Uh, I guess Mama was too worn out to go. Rosa, shut the front door and, and lock it. There was a um, policeman here and two women. We had a fight. I'm sorry you didn't make the graduation, Miss Del Rosa. What? What? I, I think that your Mama... Show your prize, Rosa. Look what I got, Mama. What? 
digest of knowledge. Hey, everything's in them from abracadabra to zoo. My sister was jealous. She just got a diploma. Diploma? Where is it? You, didn't you get no diploma? Hey, <laughs> Mama, Echolo, grab the grab it. Yes, ma'am, Mrs. Del Rosa. You certainly got a right to be very proud of your daughter. I am proud of the memory of her father. He was a baron. Now, who are you? Mama, I just introduced him. His name is Jack Hunter. What are you hunting, Jack? Mama! Same as all of them? To have a good time. And the devil cares who pays. Well, I'm sick of men. I'm almost as sick of men as I am of women. Rosie, you get out of here. I want to talk to this boy. I didn't bring Jack here to be insulted. Go on, honey, go on. And let your mama talk to me. I think your mama's just got a slight wrong impression. Yes, I got an impression. I'll go get dressed. Oh, Mama, don't spoil it for me. This is the happiest day of my life. Mrs. Del Rosa? Della Rosa. Mrs. Della Rosa, I'm sorry about this. Believe me, Mrs. Della Rosa, the last thing I had in mind was getting mixed up in a family situation. What did you do with my daughter at that high school dance? We danced. And the next night? What did you do? The next night we went to the movies. What did you do there? At the movies? We ate a bag of popcorn and watched the movie. She came home at midnight. She told me she's with her girlfriend studying civics. Whatever story she told you, it ain't my fault. And the night after that? Last Tuesday, we went roller skating. Afterwards, we went to a drugstore and had an ice cream soda. Alone? At the drugstore? No, it was crowded. And the skating rink was full of people skating. You mean you have not been alone with my daughter? Alone or not alone, what's the point of that question? I still don't see the point of it. We are Sicilians. We do not leave the girls alone with boys they are not engaged to. Mrs. Della Rosa, this is the United States. We are Sicilians. We are not cold-blooded. My girl, she is innocent. Mrs. Della Rosa, I got to tell you something. You might not believe it. It, it. It's a hard thing to say. But I... I'm also... I, I'm also innocent. What? No. I do not believe it. That's true, though. You! A sailor! Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Della Rosa... Mrs. Della Rosa, I, I don't... No. Two weeks ago, I was slapping her wrist for scratching mosquito bites. And she rode on a bicycle to the school. Now, all at once, I got a wild thing in the house. She says she's in love. Now you. You say you're in love too? Yes, ma'am, I do. I'm in love very much. What are you? Catholic? Me? Yes, ma'am, Catholic. You don't look Catholic to me. Oh, dear, oh, Mama, how do Catholics look? How do they look different from you anyone else? You stay out till I call you. Now, turn around. Do what, ma'am? I said turn around. Turn around, please, for me. Why do they make them pants so tight? Well, that's a question you'll have to ask the Navy, Mrs. Della Rosa. And that gold earring. Why do you wear a gold ring in your ear for, huh? They're crossing the equator, Mama. He was initiated into the court, uh. and that's when he gets to wear a gold Now, you earring. see that? You see what a wild thing I got in my house? Mrs. Del Rosa, I guess the Sicilians are very emotional people. And I want nobody to take advantage of that. You got the wrong idea about me, Mrs. Della Rosa. You say you are Catholic? Yes, ma'am. Then kneel down in front of Our Lady. All right, ma'am. Now what? Uh... Now, you say after me what I say. Yes, ma'am. I promise the Holy Mother that I will respect the innocence of the daughter Mama. of... A... Will you get out of here? What, are you going to say it? Well, yes, ma'am. I prom... What was it again, ma'am? I promise the Holy Mother... I promise the Holy Mother... That I will respect the innocence of the daughter Rosa, of Rosario della Rosa. 
that I will respect the innocence of the daughter Rosa of Rosario de la Rosa. Cross yourself. Now get up. I'm satisfied now. Mom, I've never been so mortified in all my life. Come on, Jack, let's go. Where are you going? We're going in three sailboats to Diamond Bay. Oh, well, go then. But you be careful. He still don't look like a Catholic to me. Buongiorno, Serafina. Buongiorno. I'm surprised to see you sitting outdoors like this. What is this thing you're wearing? I think it is an undergarment. I must tell you, the change in your appearance and behavior since Rosario's death is shocking. Shocking. I knew this was going to happen when you broke the church law and had your husband cremated, set up a little idolatrous shrine in your house, and give worship to a bottle of ashes. Are you listening? Yes. Serafina, you, you're still a young woman. Eligible for marriage and bury me again. I remember you dressed in pale blue silk at mass one morning. Easter, yes. <laughs> like a lady wearing a piece of the weather. Oh, how proudly you walked. <laughs> Too proudly. I walked with my husband. Now you crouch and shuffle about barefoot. You live like a convict, dressed in the rags of a convict. Why don't you go in the house, get dressed? Go in the house. I will go in the house. If you will answer one question. Will you answer one question? I will, if I know the answer. Father, you used to hear the confessions of my husband. Yes. Did he ever speak to you of a woman? Serafina. You know better than to ask me such a question. I don't break the church laws. The secrets of the confessional are sacred I've to got me. to know. You could tell me. I've got to uh, know. Let, let, let go of me, Serafina. Not till you tell me, Father. Father, you will tell me. Oh, please tell me. Or I'll go mad. Uh, Serafina. I'll please. go back in the house and smash the urn with the ashes if you don't tell me. What could I tell you if you would not believe the known facts? The known facts? <laughs> Who knows the known facts? Nobody knew my rose of the world but me. And now they can lie because the rose ain't living. Uh, please, uh, they want the marble urn broken. They want me to smash it. They want the rose ashes scattered because I had too much glory. Uh, uh, and they don't want glory like that in nobody's heart. Serafina, take your hands off me. When you tell me, I'll let you go. Oh, it's been a long time. I wanted to break out like let this. Let go of me, Serafina. Must I call for help? Let go. Call for help, but I won't let you go till you tell me. You're not a respectable woman. No. I'm not respectable. I'm a woman. No, no, you're not a woman. You're an animal. See? See, animal. It's so animal. You tell him. Shout it up and down the block. He is attacking the priest. He'll tear the black suit from him. Unless he tells that the women in this town are lying to us. Serafina. Tell me. Asunta. Asunta. Father. No. Father, you tell me. Please tell me. See? I'm little girl. No. I'm not an animal. Please. Please tell me. Serafina. Serafina, figlia mia. Keep away from me. Oh, Father, are you all right? Thank you, Asunta. See. Serafina, won't you go inside to get dressed? Leave me alone. Both of you. Go away and leave me alone. In the moment, Act Two of The Rose Tattoo, starring Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of The Rose Tattoo, starring Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach. After Father DeLeo left, Serafina sat for the rest of the afternoon on the porch. From time to time, I would look out to see if she was all right. And once, when I went to the window, I saw a strange man get out of a car on the road and go up to the porch where she was sitting. Good afternoon, lady. What do you want? Well, I got a little novelty here which I'm offering to just a few lucky people at what we call an introductory price. Know what I mean? No. 
<clears throat> well, lady, this thing here that I'm dropping right in your lap is bigger than television. I sell directly to merchants, but when I stopped over there to have my car serviced, I seen you taking the air on the stoop. I thought I'd walk... Hey! Where are you rolling? <clears throat> now, lady, this little article has a deceptive appearance. Now, first of all, I want you to notice hey! how... The... Hey is for horses. Now, madam, allow me to show you what happens I'm when you... I'm talking to you. Something giving you gas pains, macaroni. My name is not macaroni. All right, spaghetti. I'm not macaroni. I'm not spaghetti. I'm a human being that drives a truck of bananas. I drive a truck of bananas for the Southern Fruit Company for a living. Not to play cowboys and Indians on no highway with no rotten road hog. I give you the sign to pass me. You tell me and give me the horn. And, and then on that curb, you go past me and make me drive off the highway. I don't like that, no sir. And I'm glad you stop here and I'll take the cigar out of your mouth. Take out the cigar. Take it out for me, greaseball. Oh. If I take it out, I'll push it down your throat. I got three dependents. If I fight, I get fired. But I'm gonna fight and get fired. Take out the cigar. Suppose I don't. Then I'll just take it out for you. Well, let's see you try, eh? <laughs> I got your license number, Macaroni. I know your boss. Oh, drop that. Drop that. Hey, lady. Lady, I gotta go in the house. Hey, you stay out of there. Where do you think you're going? Hey, please, leave me alone. I, I gotta be alone. Leave me alone, please, now. Hey, you. What are you doing in here? Why have you come in my house? Hey, lady, hey, lady, please leave me alone. You got no business in here. I got to cry after a fight. I'm sorry, lady. I, I, what, what's the matter with you? I always cry after a fight, but I don't want the people to see me. It's not like a man. A <laughs> man is no different from nobody else. <laughs> everybody, everybody cries sometimes. <laughs> I always cry when somebody else is crying. Hey, lady, lady. <laughs> No, hey, lady, no, don't cry. Oh. Why should you cry? I stop. I stop. I stop in a minute. This is not like a man. I'm ashamed of myself. I stop now, please, lady. Hey, your jacket is torn. How come your jacket is torn? Oh, dear. No, no, you take it off. I'll sew it up for you. I do, uh... I do so. I got three defendants and he took down my license number. Oh, people are always taking our license numbers and telephone numbers <laughs> and numbers that don't mean nothing all the numbers. Three defendants, not citizens even. No, they leave checks now. Nothing. Now, he, he's going to complain to the boy. I wanted to cry all day. He said he fired me, but no, stop oh, crying. Will you please stop crying so I can stop crying? I'm a sissy. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I'm ashamed. No. Oh, no. No. Don't you be ashamed of nothing. The world is too crazy for people to be ashamed in it. I'm not ashamed. I had two fights on the street today. And my daughter, she called me disgusting. Ah. Uh. I, um, I gotta show this by hand. I broke my machine in a fight with two women. That's what they call a cat fight. Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of what happened. Crying is not like a man. Oh, nobody saw you but me. To me, it don't matter. You, you're a simpatica molto. It was not just a fight that makes me break down. No, you and me too. What was the trouble today? Well... My name is Manjakawalu, oh. which means eat a horse. It's a comical name, I know. Well, today at the Southern Fruit Company, I find on the pay envelope, not Manjakawalu, eat a horse in big print. Uh, inside the envelope, I find a notice. My wages have been Ganeshi. You know what Ganeshi is? Yeah. Ganeshi, eat a horse, road hog, all in one day, that's too much. I go crazy, I boil, I cry, I'm ashamed, but I'm not able to help it. Even a what truck driver's a human being. A human beings that must cry. Yes. 
They must cry. I couldn't cry all day. But now I cry. I feel much better. When my husband was here, I never cried. Excuse me for asking, but where is your husband? Them are his ashes in the marble urn. Ah. He was a baron. I, I hope he's resting in peace. You, you reminded me of him when you took off your shirt. He hauled bananas. Isn't that what you do? Si, senor. In a ten-ton truck? No, an eight-ton truck. My husband hauled bananas in a ten-ton truck. Well, he was a baron. On his chest, he had the tattoo of a rose. I, I'll tell you something about the tattoo of my husband. Well, he had this rose tattoo on his chest. And one night, I woke up with a burning pain on me here. I turned on the light. I looked at my breast. And on it, I saw the rose tattoo of my husband. On me. On my breast, this tattoo. Mastrano. And that was the night that... I got to speak frankly to you. I must speak frankly. We're grown-up people. That was the night I conceived my son. <sighs> the little boy I lost when I lost my husband. I don't know why I told you, but I like how you talk. You know, there are some people, they want... To make everything dirty. Two, two of them kind of people that came to my house today. And they told me a terrible lie in front of the ashes. It was so awful, a lie. If I thought it was true, I'd smash the earth and throw the ashes away. What lie did they tell you? No. No, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to forget it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would forget anything that makes you unhappy. Yeah. Hey, you know, this is a cozy little home-like place you got here. Oh, oh, it's both of them. You got a nice place, too? I got a place with three dependents in it. What dependents? I got one old maid sister, one feeble-minded grandmother, one lush of a pop. They got the Pachisi habit. They play the game of Pachisi morning, night, and noon, and they, and they pass a bucket of beer around the table. They got the beer habit, too? Oh, yeah. And the numbers habit, especially my grandmother. She's a very sweet old lady who don't think it's necessary to pay the grocery bill so long as there's money to play on the numbers. Today, the ideal grocery company, they garnish my wages. Eh, there, now, I, I told you my whole life. <laughs> and now I, I got to make a telephone call. Who you got a call? I'm calling my boss in Biloxi to explain why I'm late. Oh, the call to Biloxi is a 10 cent call. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. You'll pay it. You got a sensible attitude toward life. Hello? Uh, give me the Southern Fruit Company in Biloxi, 787. You're a bachelor, huh? With three dependents. I'll tell you my hopes and dreams. Who? Me? I'm hoping to meet some sensible older lady. Maybe a lady a little bit older than me. I don't care if she's a little bit too plump or not such a stylish dresser. The important thing in a lady is understanding. Good sense. And I wanted to have a well-furnished house and a profitable little business of some kind. Oh. And uh, such a lady with a well-furnished house and a business. What does she want with a man with three dependents? They got the Pachisi habit, the beer habit, playing the numbers. Love and affection in a world that's lonely, cold. Vanessa, I'm a healthy young man existing without no life of my own. That call is ten cents for three minutes. Is the line busy? No, not the line, but the boss. The charge for the call goes higher. This ain't the phone of a millionaire you're using. Now get your boss on the phone or hang up the what? phone. What? What? Mr. Sicardi? I was chicks at the Southern Fruit Company this hot afternoon. Ha <laughs> ha! It's much a What? What? You, you got the complaint already? Wait. What's saying, Tipo Vavori? No! This roadhog was. Hello? Hello? Uh, Mr. Sicardi? 
A man with three dependents out of a job. Oh. I ain't uh, through sewing your jacket, but but it's too dark to see the work anymore. I I got a suggestion to make. You open the bottom drawer of that bureau there. You'll you'll find a shirt in white tissue paper. You can wear it while I'm fixing this. It was made for somebody. They never call for it. Is there a name pinned to it? Estelle? No, don't tell me that name. What a beautiful shirt. The color of a rose. (laughs) Seta, seta pura. This shirt is too good for Manjakal. Everything here is too good for Manjakal. Nothing is too good for a man. If the man is good, you are welcome to wear it. <laughs> How does it feel, huh? The silk on you. Feels like a girl's hands. It'll make you less trouble. There's nothing more beautiful than a gift between people. Uh, now you're smiling. You like me a little bit better. <laughs> you know, what they should have done when you was a baby. What? They should have put tape on your ears to hold them back to your head. So when you grew up, they wouldn't stick out like that. <laughs> like wings on a little cupid doll. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I got to go now. You, you've been troppo gentile, Mrs. I am the widow of the Baron Della Rosa. Excuse the way I'm not dressed. I'm not always like this. Sometimes I fix myself up. When my husband was living, when my husband comes home, I had on a clean dress. Sometimes I even put a rose in my hair. A rose in your hair would be pretty. For a widow, it ain't the time of roses. When can I bring the shirt back? When you pass by again. I pass by tonight for supper. Will it? Uh... Well, look at the window. If the shutters are open and there's a light in the window, you can stop by for your jacket. But if the shutters are closed, you better not stop by because uh, my daughter will be home. She's gone on a picnic. She might be home early, but not not that there's nothing wrong with two grown people having a conversation, Uh but but my daughter's 15, and I got to be careful to set her a perfect example. But if there's a light in the window, then you'll be expected. Arrivederci. Good evening. Signora Della Rosa. Is something the matter? I didn't expect to see you looking so pretty. You you are a young little widow. <laughs> you are uh... Fix yourself up. Uh, I've been to the ideal barbers. I got the whole works. You got rose oil in your hair. See, si. all your rosa. You like the smell of it? See. Si. Uh, shall we sit down? I guess that's better than standing up. Shall we sit down on that sofa? You take the sofa. I'll sit down on this chair. You don't like to sit down on a sofa? I talk just as good on a chair as I talk on a sofa. What do you, uh, hit your shoulders so much like that for, huh? Oh, that, that's a nervous habit. Oh, I thought maybe the suit don't fit you good. I bought this suit to get married in four years ago. But you didn't get married. I give her, the girl, a zircon instead of a diamond. She had it examined, the door was slammed in my face. (laughs) I think maybe I do the same thing myself. Buy the zircon. No, slam the door. Our eyes were not sincere looking. You, you've got sincere looking eyes. Uh, give me a hand so I could tell your fortune. Oh, tell me if you can, if my husband, if my, what do you see? I see uh, two men in your life. One, very handsome. One, not handsome. His ears are too big, but not as big as his heart. He has three dependents and enough love for three men. Oh, you talk a sweet mouth. Well, what's in that fancy red box? That's a, a present I bought for a nervous but nice little lady. Open it. Ah, oh, 
chocolate. Hey. Oh, gracias, gracias. But I'm too fat. You're not fat. You're just, just pleasing and plump. Don't talk that way. It makes me nervous. I get nervous, I start to cry. Uh, uh, hey, let's talk about something to take your mind off your troubles. You, you say you got a young daughter? Her name is Rosa. She's only 15. Well, she's got a boyfriend, does she? She met a sailor. Oh, dear. No wonder you seem so nervous. I don't want to let her go out with this sailor. He wears a gold ring in his ear. Oh, no, no, Santa. Mm. Did, did he have a tattoo? Did who have what? The sailor, friend of your daughter. Did he have a tattoo? Why do you ask me that? Ah, because most sailors, they got a tattoo. How do I know if he had a tattoo or not? I got a tattoo. You got a tattoo? Si, si, veramente. What kind of tattoo you got? What kind do you think? Ah, oh, I think you got um, a South Sea girl without no clothes on. No, huh? no South Sea girl. Then you got uh, a big red heart with mama written on it. Uh, wrong again, Bolognese. Uh, uh, wait, I'll take off my shirt and show you. What are you doing in this house to take off your shirt? Wait, wait till I tell you to look. One second now. Okay, look. Ah. No. No, not a rose. See, si. see, si, all a rose. Oh, I don't, I don't feel very good. The air. Che fate? Che fate? Che dite? The house has a tin uh, roof on it. The air is closed. I can't breathe. For that. I didn't mean to surprise you. No, please, don't talk about it. Anybody could have a rose tattoo. It don't mean nothing. Uh, when did you get that tattoo put on your chest? I got it tonight, after supper. That's what I thought. I wanted to be close to you, to make you happy. I want so bad to... Hey! What's the matter, Baronessa? I, I only want to make you happy. Tell it to the Marines. You got that tattoo? And that box of candy after supper, and you came here to fool me. I got the box of chocolate a long time ago. How long ago? If that's not too personal a question. I got it the night the door was slammed in my face by the girl I give the zircon. <sighs> well, let that be a lesson to you. Don't try to fool women. You're not smart enough. I guess you want me to go away and give back the red shirt. Oh, keep the shirt. I don't want it back. And stop hitching your shoulders. You make me nervous. Well, is it my fault you've been a widow too long? You make a mistake. You make a mistake. Both of us make a mistake. Hey, uh, we should have been friends. But I think we meet the wrong day. Suppose I go out, I come in the door again, and we start all over. Oh. No. No, it's no use. The day was wrong to begin with. It started with them two women. They told me today that my husband was mixed up with um, a woman at the square roof. Hey, what was the name on that shirt? On that slip of paper, do you remember? I remember the name because I know the woman. The name was Estelle Hohengard. You take me there. Take me to the square roof. Wait, wait, there's something I have to get for you. This I take with me. Hey, Baroness, what do you want to take them scissors for? To cut the lying tongue out of a woman's mouth. You take me there. They got a cover charge I'll there. charge them a cover. The fund will start at I'll midnight. I'll start it sooner. The floor show commences at midnight. I'll commence. Now, you take me there now. I'll cut the heart out of that woman. She cut the heart out of me. Uh, nobody's going to cut the heart out of nobody. What are you doing? That's Planard 970. Hey, you ain't paid for the call this afternoon yet. Who are you calling now? I want to speak to the blackjack dealer, please. Mr. Stowe Hohengarten. No, don't talk to that woman. She lied. No, not a Stowe Hohengarten. She deals a straight game of cards. A Stowe? This is Manjagalo. I got a question to ask you, which is a very personal question. It's got to do with a very good-looking truck driver, not living now, but once on a time thought to have been a very well-known character at the square roof. His name was... Hey, Barney, so what was his name? Rosario Della Rosa. Rosario de la Rosa was the name. Ibero? Ibero? Give me that phone. Hello? This is the wife speaking. 
What do you know of my husband? What is the lie? Don't you remember? I brought you the rose-colored silk to make him a shirt. You said, for a man. And I said, yes, for a man that's wild like a gypsy. But if you think I'm a liar, come here and let me show you his rose tattooed on my chest. Liza! <laughs> what are you doing? This is the earth that holds the ashes of a rose. What an answer! A minute ago, I pushed you away. Now I do not push you away. Buona notte, Mr. Manja Cavallo! You... You make me go home now? No, no. Can't take the thing. You make out like you're going. You drive the truck down the road and hide it. And you come back, and I leave the back door open for you to come in. Ah, 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 capisco, capisco. Capisco. Arrivederci! Buona notte! Buona notte, buona notte! And give them my love! then around the Straits of Magellan and back up the west coast of South America. Putting in at three ports before we dock at San Francisco. This was the happiest day of my life. This is the saddest night. Is your mother asleep? Mm-hmm. Probably dreaming about my father. Is that what she wants me to do, just dream about love? Well, she knows that her Rosa is a rose. And she wants her rose to have someone better than me. Better than you? Well, you see me through rose-colored glasses. I see you with love. Yes, but your mama sees me with common sense. Honey, I gotta go. You'd have to break my arms, too. Oh, Rosa, you want to drive me crazy. I want you not to leave me. You're a very young girl, 15. 15 is too young. Get out. Get out. Carissimo. <sighs> You gotta save some of those feelings for when you're grown up. I am grown up. Grown enough to be married. Oh, I gotta be going, I gotta. I won't let you. Now listen to me, Rosa. Today on that island, I remembered that promise I made your mother and I kept it. What time in the afternoon must you be on the boat? Five. Why? What will you be doing till five? I'm going to check in at some flea bag hotel on North Rampart Street, and then I'm going to get loaded. Do me a little favor. Before you get loaded, will you look in the waiting room at the Greyhound bus station, please, at 12 o'clock noon? Why? You might find me there, waiting for you. Well, your mama would never let you go. I'll find some way. I want you to give me that little gold ring on your finger. I want to give you my heart to keep forever. And ever and ever. In all my life, I never knew nothing so sweet. It's you and my own. Look for me at 12 noon. I'll be there somehow. Get rid of him. You stay here. I'm coming with you. You hear me? Stay here. I'm not by myself. You've been drinking, too. You can smell it. Hey, you, man. Uh, uh, what are you doing in my house, huh? You get up. Get out of here. You want to call the police? What an answer. I have a beautiful dream of you. Beautiful You dream. get out of here. Quick. What an answer. I love get you. Get out. Well, last night Don't you... Don't talk said... to me. Don't say nothing. Get out before I kill you. What well, I come back tonight, maybe... Police! Well, 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 well. Who was that man? I... I don't know how... 
He got in. Maybe the, maybe the back door was open. Huh? Oh. Yes, maybe it was. Maybe he maybe he climbed in the window. He fell down the chimney, maybe. Rosa, I want you to understand about that man. That was a man. That was a man. That, that was a man. Can't you think of a lie, Mama? He was a truck driver, Carter. He got into a fight. And uh, I took pity on him. I, I let him sleep under Sophie. Carter. Carter. He was Sicilian. He had rose oil in his hair. And the rose tattoo of your father. I dreamed he was your father. Sorry. How beautiful is my daughter. Mama, if I leave now, I can still see Jack before a ship sail. I'm going. Go then, Rosa. Go to the boy. I'll be back tonight. Rosa. Rosa. Did I see you? Asunta. I heard you call the police. Are you in trouble? Asunta, the urn is broke. The ashes are spilt on the floor, and I cannot touch them. It is the urn. But there are no ashes. A man... When he burns, he leaves only a handful of ashes. No woman can hold him. The wind must blow him away. Serafina, he is standing on the road. He has no shirt on, but on his chest is the tattoo of a rose. Asunta, I'll tell you something maybe you won't believe. Oh, feel me. It is impossible to tell me anything that I don't believe. When I hear his voice, I feel someday that I will be a woman again. I feel on my breast the burning of the rose. Someday I shall carry again in my body two lives. Two. Two lives again. Two. From the Felice. Tu vai, Serafina. Vengo. Vengo, amore! Baronesa! Amore! Baronesa! Maybe now I call you Serafina. You have just heard the best plays production of The Rose Tattoo, starring Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Our thanks and our applause to Miss Stapleton, Mr. Wallach, and company for their performance. Next week, we shall try a different kind of comedy, Kiss the Boys Goodbye. At the time she wrote this hit, the author signed her name Claire Booth. She is better known now as our ambassador to Italy, Claire Booth Luce. This comedy won new fame for an actress, Helen Clare, and we shall have Miss Clare with us next week in her original role. This is Chapman saying goodbye until then. The Rose Tattoo was transcribed and adapted for radio by Earl Hamner. Heard the cast were Jane Webb as Rosa, with Louis Van Ruten, John McGovern, Agnes Young, Ann Diamond, Bob Hastings, Virginia Payne, and from the original Broadway cast, Jane Hoffman as Flora and Augusta Morigi as Asunta. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Fred Collins. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.